Have you ever had a dream that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? Welcome lucid dreamers of this holographic reality, mind matrix simulation to the Symphony of Realities podcast. Join your host, Christopher Anatra, and settle into your X, Y, and Z coordinates within space and time as we explore the meaning of consciousness and our holographic reality with our incredible guests. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 36 of the Symphony of Realities podcast. The title of this one is King Arthur and the Pendragons. And today, back by popular demand, I have Sonia from Tree of Knowledge. Sonia, how are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> You're still doing your adventures in Europe? Yes, I am. I'm going to be here probably longer than I thought. I have decided out of the spur that instead of going back to the U.S., I'm going to stay another month and I'm going to end up going to Albania. Albania of all places. Albania, it's been drawing me. Really? So I'm going to end up there. Albania is really strange. Um, for some reason, it's one of the places that are very rare that if you're an American passport holder, you do not need a visa and you can stay 365 days with nothing. Really? That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you might be there for 365 days. I don't think so, well, but no, probably <laughs> not. But I am definitely going to go there. Um, we'll find out what's going on. Why I'm being driven to go there. Let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> cool. Will Will Arthur be going with you? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. All right. So everyone, we've got like a really interesting show today. Um, topic is a controversial one because there's a lot of information about King Arthur and the family he was part of, the Pen Pendragon family, and, you know, all of the history about Camelot and Avalon and who was who and what did they do and et cetera. So Sonia's got some information to share. And of course, if you know me, I put together a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation so I can remember to, that we could talk about some certain uh, topics right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up the PowerPoint. I'm going to talk about the first slide that I have. And then we're going to talk to Sonia about some of the things um, that she's tuning into as well. Um, but I wanted to, before I do that, Sonia, now, like a few weeks ago, we we scheduled this and you had told yeah. me that, oh, so you were are, are already going to talk about King Arthur, right? Because one of your viewers had brought it up to you. Yeah, absolutely. What happened was um, I had a viewer leave on my video. I think it was 186, which is the cosmic egg video where I talk about the cosmic egg and where we are on top of that. And they just said a couple words, something about um, the magic sword and Arthur. And when I read those few little words, I was like, boom, I got slammed. And all this information started coming in. And I'm like, oh my God, my Arthur. <laughs> I'm like, Arthur, I'm gonna have to do a video on this because so much information came in, I was blown away. And then the very next morning I got up I went to check my emails and there was Chris leaving me an email. Sonia, let's do a video on King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And it's like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> exactly. It's really cool how I was out laughing. I'm like, oh my gosh, are we in sync or what? <laughs> yeah. And as, as a matter of fact, too, I have some things that I want to ask you about that are going to seem to everyone like we've gone into left field, you know, when we get to that point. But I think that they they all have meaning. So we'll see how this conversation goes. I don't think it's going to go the way people think it's going to go. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to call up uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And episode 36, King Arthur and the Pendragons. The, uh, the first slide on here is what I wanted to talk about first. So King Arthur, he's known as the once and future king. He lived during the 5th or 6th century, and that time period is called the Dark Ages. There are actually hundreds of years where our history is kind of wonky because I believe big things happened 
that the global narrative wanted to edit out. And what I wrote here, the third bullet point says, the Pendragon family, which includes King Arthur and the kingdom he created, mm -hmm. who is a household name, right? Everybody knows King Arthur uh, to many and who he exceeded all prediction models by domination and control. And that's a key thing. So when the system, what you call domination and control, they do these predictive models. And if they think you're going to be successful with something, you know, they can make moves so that you can't be successful. But then sometimes there are those that exceed all the prediction models and the system had no idea it was going to happen. So what happened was because he exceeded all these prediction models, he was taken out by domination and control, which included his creation of Camelot, and he was sent to what I call the land of the forgotten. And for people that watch my videos, they'll, they'll know that term because I use that quite often, the land of the forgotten. And the land of the forgotten basically means when there's a big important timeline in history that happens, it can be edited out almost like you're editing video software or you're moving something into the trash icon on your desktop. So they took that whole swath of unbelievable great history and eliminated it because it didn't go into what the system wanted it to go. So he was sent to the land of the forgotten. And currently it's just a myth, right? There's some basic evidence, but it's like, there's nothing that's solid historical. So this is what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, we're gonna get more into what could have been with the whole Pendragon family and Camelot and uh, Stargates and all that stuff all has, has relevance. So, Sonia, so let's start with you. Are there some things that you'd like to, to share right off the bat about King Arthur and the whole situation? Okay. First off, it's two things. It, they are events that have happened. What would you do if there's events that have happened? You need to get them back into the reality. You come, you find someone, you download information, and you make it a parable. Okay, so what are parables? Parables are scenarios where you need to say something of a higher caliber, a behavior, or what have you, but also in laying foundations of a reality that you expect people to live by, your chivalry, your code of chivalry, and so on and so on and so on. I saw that always in the dark ages, it's the pinnacle of the Renaissance period. Renaissance being the time where we create the most we're ever going to create before we just live on that creation. Okay. All dark ages are the, the middle, the beginning, and the end of the Renaissance. And then we come out of it and then we just live it. Okay. If you wanted to wipe the dark ages out, first you're going to say it's the dark ages. Everyone didn't know anything. It just it doesn't matter when in reality it's the Renaissance. We always have a renaissance, and then we have society after that. And what does it do to the society? So yes, absolutely. That I will say about the entire myth of King Arthur, which shouldn't be a myth, but a time frame that's forgotten. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to say something before we talk more about King Arthur. Is that an Easter Island statue behind you? This Moai statue. Yeah, the Moai, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that is very cool. When I came to this Airbnb, it's done up like the island. I have got in here, in this living room, a barrel. I want to show you this really quick. Let's see okay. if you can see. Can you see this? Yeah, the barrel, yeah. <laughs> I have got a barrel in this living room. And it was so crazy because I had this dream once of a white dragon, which we'll be talking about, the red and the white dragon, coming into my reality where I had a dream I was in Tibet. And I went into a little shop store and this white dragon came in, wrapped around this barrel, it looked just like that, and opened it up and it was full of solid gold coins and said to me, you will never, ever want for anything again. Wow, that's <laughs> great, that's great. You know, and what you said about the red and the white dragon, too, I think that's going to have a lot of meaning for our conversation today. Yes, it is. <laughs> and just, just getting back to that East Island statue, I had a, this recent 
really interesting situation with time changing right in front of my eyes related to those statues because I was doing, because we've talked about this before, right? Yes, we have. The hieroglyphs on the back of the statues now. And I was doing, so, after we spoke, I was doing some further research and I found that I was surprised that there were 1,036 of these statues on Easter Island. And I was like, I thought maybe there were 70 or 80. I, I did too. I didn't realize there were over a thousand. So um, then I started watching this video from a woman that was talking about it. And in the video, she starts to say 1,036. And then the video gets a little garbled and she says 1,043. And then at the end of the video, she says 1,043 again. I go back online, I check, and it says that there's 1,043 of these statues. Same exact wow. site, the number changed. So wow. I was like- I was so confused about that. So what I did next is like, well, first of all, I'm excited. It's over a thousand. So I, I called my girlfriend and I said, do you know how many statues there are in Easter Island? And she goes, yeah, there's over a thousand. And like over a thousand, how did you know that? And she's like, you called me two days ago and told me that. And I'm like, no, I like, I just found that out now. So these time streams are crazy. And then just the other day, I looked up the number again, and it's now 886. <gasps> so th th like literally there's something going on with Easter Island where the timelines are merging and- It's not and, just Easter Island. It's we're not just Easter Island. We're being edited, 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 edited. It's like we're, we're it's like think of a, 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 think of a whole entire movie on those little, um, you know, a frame, no frame, a frame, and yeah, someone is space. clipping yeah. and pasting, clipping and pasting. Exactly. So it makes it so hard for us to know what is real, like what was true history. Like we can try to figure things out, we can tune into things, but what timeline are we tuning into? Mm -hmm. There's just so there's just so much of that. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And it, it's becoming even with me, it's like, okay, I knew this yesterday, but it's not true today. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And I just want to say too that dream you had about the barrel and so forth and abundance. That's great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May we all have dreams like that. That's that's amazing. Yeah. So so what's the first thing you wanted to talk about related to Arthur and his family and so forth? What's one of the things that you're um, tuning into right away? Okay. One of the first things that hit me was when I had that person leave me a little bleep on my video 186 which is the cosmic egg and i got slammed the first thing i got slammed with is what would you do with the populace of people who were so dumbed down and you needed to make this dark age is known but you're going to do it through writing you're going to do it through giving the information out to somebody so they can write about it to make a parable okay so i saw the first thing i saw was the man writing down the story of the knights, and I even wrote his name down because I'm really hideous with names. Thomas Mallory is the man's name that wrote the um, the King Arthur parables, whatever, because they were actually just like parables. And I saw that he was getting downloads from this place that everyone seems to think is mythical, Avalon. So Avalon, is a place and it's inside of this snow globe. It's being um, hidden, okay? It's being hidden because of this place and, and you know how it is in here. So basically this information was given him so that we could be re-educated. It, it was given back far enough that everybody today, if you just say King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, we all, know about it and I don't care where you live in this snow globe it's, it's across true. the board exactly. which is why it was given at a certain time frame so this could spread of course there's a lot of deviations from there they've made cartoons they've made movies they've made who knows they've made a lot of stuff so that's the first thing I'm going to say about it and then I was talking about the renaissance being the dark ages and then I could dive deep into each aspect or would you like to talk about anything before I start diving in <laughs> Well, you know, I would like to talk about someone who is part of this Pendragon family in modern history that people may not know was part of this family. 
But when you tune into it and you look at the Akashic records, it becomes pretty clear. So first of all, what does Pendragon mean? So Pendragon is a, is a name, it's a family name that means head dragon. And Luther Pendragon was the father of Arthur, according to the way the story goes. And the Pendragons have were an offshoot of Atlantis as well, when I tune into that. So I'm going to tell you who the famous person is. I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. This, this, you might find this interesting. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee has that dragon family DNA lineage to the, to the dragon families. The Pendragons, there's also the secret dragon family lineages in Japan and China, which exist to this day. You won't be able to find them, but, but they're there. So a lot of people may not realize that, but Bruce Lee, he had, well, my, my um, youngest son, whose name is Owen, he calls it the Riz. He had charisma, right? When he was on the screen, people just wanted to watch him. So what he did is he actually exceeded all prediction models. The system never thought he would get as popular as he did. And what happens? He became popular and then the system had to take him out. That's right. Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting, something like yeah. to kind of set the stage that the Pendragons have not disappeared from this reality. And every once in a while, one will come in, come in and become famous and so forth. And they have that special DNA lineage. So, yeah. He was actually murdered. Um, it was done oh, yeah. through the he was done through the pharmaceutical companies. Um, they gave him an overdose of one of their bio weapons. Let's just call it that biological. Um, so basically, somebody had dropped liquid into his drink drops, and it was from the pharmaceutical companies. It was a type of synthetic poison, like they're using now on people. And what it caused swelling of his brain, like it happened to some of the people now, <laughs> it's the same stuff, basically, it was a neurotoxin. And so he went and he got what anybody would do in that day and age. I'm going to go get some aspirin. I need to fix my headache. And what it actually did was it created a cytoclone in his body. So he, they dropped the poison synthetic neurotoxin into his drink he took it it caused him to have a great headache i mean he was having the worst migraine because his brain was starting to swell he took aspirin just plain simple aspirin which was the worst thing he could have ever taken because of the combination together made his brain start hemorrhaging and that's why he died yeah and actually if he wanted to get rid of the neurotoxins what did he need to take snake venom what do they have what do they give you when when you get bit by a snake they give you the snake venom um detox or what is it called like ivermectin and all of that before it was tampered with because even that stuff has been tampered with now anything coming from a pharmaceutical company is toxic <laughs> anything from a pharmaceutical company yeah i would agree with that there's also Mandela effects regarding his death too, because some people, and it, it kind of gets really weird. Some people like remember him being like shot on set. And then one of his movies changed that he was actually shot on set and there was a funeral mm -hmm. after. So there's all kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. I think the global narrative based upon what you're saying says that he overdosed, he smoked too much marijuana. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't even do marijuana. He I, I don't think he would have, but yeah. No. He, he did not touch drugs. He did not do any of that stuff. He really did know that the body is the temple. And in order to keep the temple clean, you've got to be clean. The bottom line is that the global narrative, domination and control, does not have a lot of love for the Pendragons. No. <laughs> that's why <that's what laughs> it all boils down to that. Yeah. Okay. So what was one of the things you wanted to talk about? Because well, I've got a lot of things to talk about too, but I want I want to start with you. Okay, so when I look at the character Arthur and how Arthur came into the world, Arthur's, Arthur came into the world most vicariously, and it all had to do with deception from his mother. His mother was, I wrote her name down, but I don't remember what her name is. Uh, I'll have to look what her name is. I had to write names down. I suck when it comes to names. So... 
basically, let me look at Arthur's mother's name. If I can find it. Mm, I don't know where I stuck it. Oh, Igraine. Igraine was his mother, but she was married to another man, um, Corlius, or something like this. He was um, the Duke of Cornwall. So basically, Uther, which is Arthur's real father, wanted to, he was, he saw her and had, he just wanted her as soon as he saw her. They had gone somewhere, like a big get together, the, all these people, uh, royalty were invited and basically saw this woman, lusted after this woman. Oh my God, I just got to have this woman. Um, Merlin was always a big part of the Pendragon reign. So I do put this into Chinese mythology because I made that connection too, which has got to do with the dragons. <laughs> this all has to do with Chinese and the Chinese lineage and where it all began. And then it got changed over to, um, I guess, Ireland, England, all of that. But it actually bases in China because China actually dates back farther. <laughs> so it is it is all over the map and why the dragons. So basically Arthur's father is Uther Pendragon and the mother is another queen. and. He rides in over a veil of smoke. He did a metamorphosis to make him look like the man that she was married to while he was in battle. Those two were battling it out with the armies. He was slain and killed. So he takes over his form after he was slain, rides into the castle, even though he left his armies over there, they think, why would you leave all your army? Because it wasn't him. And then he violently assaulted that poor woman, you know, a form of rape, basically. And she got pregnant because he, but there was a price to pay because he did this and it was against natural law. You don't do these things. It goes against the code. He paid with his life shortly after that. So, it's, um, it's, so as you're talking to, like, there's something called shape-shifting technology Yes, so it seems like art, like shifting technology, and we have it today. It's being used today, <laughs> and all of this technology was actually all technology was based off of everything that's here in nature. So there's one creature that does well. Actually, there's a few cre creatures. We've got the um, think of the shape shifting uh, chameleon, but we have fish, um, the cuttlefish that can shape shift not only the colors that they are, but the shape of their skin. They can make themselves look like a rock or a piece of coral. They can take their smooth skin, boom, they're a coral. So this technology was mimicked through this reality toward the very beginning. And it's not the only thing. Think of Kevlar it was based off spider webs and on and on it goes. Yeah, because... Okay. Because that leads to other things too. So, like, what are we like the, these avatars? You know, these bodies that we exist in as well. Mm -hmm. So, can these? If we have, if our higher self, you know, has the technology, or let's say in another life we we were another type of like mythical being or something like that, you would think that our higher self would have that technology to allow us mm -hmm. to shape shift. But I don't think mm -hmm. Earth, that's something that Earth wants right now. I think shape shifting yeah. is limited. Although exactly. some people are in disguises, right? Yeah, we do have shapeshifters in this reality. You can call them reptilians. Oh. They have tech and they shapeshift. That's why they look human. <laughs> yes. But they're not the only ones. This is very old technology. So when we go back and we see, we, we have to go into Arthur and then how he was created and then who helped assist that? Well, I guess it would be your Merlin. <laughs> uh, right. We have to go into why would Merlin do such a thing when he was supposed to be of a higher caliber? He was supposed to be the teacher of the Lady of the Lake, which was a, a mystical being. He was supposed to be the teacher of Morgan, Morgan Le Fay, who was the sister of Morghese. So, and then it goes on and on and on. I mean, and then you have to look if when I was having a download and I looked into Merlin because I wanted to know about Merlin. 
and I'm looking into him and I saw that he was more like a soothsayer. He would be your oracle, but he had lived for a very long, long time, thousands of years through his technologies of learning how to put certain things together. And I'm talking minerals. Uh, he could make gold, silver. And these are all things that are achievable and that have been done. He used these things, the gold. Um, uh, there's a very fine white gold that was created and it extends life because what it does is it repairs you cellularly. So think of a cylinder and in that cylinder, every time you have a seven years, a piece of it falls off, a piece of it falls off. It doesn't self-replicate a hundred percent. Well, he had the ability to self-replicate a hundred percent. You can live forever. You can live forever. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the story of Saint Germain, like he had that same type of technology. He would just yep, same technology, Saint yeah. Germain. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's your alchemy. <laughs> so I was going to add one one thing too about um, um, at the Atlantis connection, and I'm just going to say the I'm going to I'm going to share the screen again, and I'm just going to say these names because this might um, affect some of your in our viewers dna just by hearing them but um this picture shows pendragon castle which is in the uk um pendragons were an offshoot of atlantis fleeing the dark ages after the final cataclysm in the bermuda triangle area that's what i tuned into and then there's some interesting works where people have channeled information related to atlantis and related to the pendragons one of them was a woman that some of you may know. Her name is Ashana Dean. And, you know, let the viewer use discretion, right, as far as information that you get. But there's a couple of things that she mentioned that I was tuning into that I agree with. But she named two areas of Atlantis. One was called Nohasa, that they were from Nohasa, Atlantis, and they were exiled to Lohas, which is a what was what she calls Northeast Atlantis, also the location of Earth Star Gate 11. So, and that they were travelers between realms. So in a little while, we're going to talk about Avalon. You mentioned it already, but that realm, how it's being, you know, hidden from you, so to speak, I, I believe is actually another realm. It depends on how you want to, you know, distinguish these things. So I just wanted to mention that too, the, that name Nohasa and Lohas, because a lot of times we hear about Atlantis, but we don't know any details. We don't know any names of any regions. No, hot, like the first one is Highlands, and the and the bottom one is Lowlands. And oh, when we talk about Lowlands, we're talking about actual densities. We're not talking about a place. They didn't get moved from this physical place. They got moved from a density. So basically, inside of a frequency, we have 12 densities. They were moved from a higher density to a lower one outcast oh, okay. so highland and lowland is what's coming in one means highland and one means lowland and what it really means is this density versus this density ah very interesting okay so this is also how avalon is working it's on a different density okay yeah, and then as we as we keep raising our frequency and our density becomes lighter, you know, will these things come into our reality? Things that will go into us? their reality, actually. Yeah, we will be going into their reality. They won't be coming into ours. No. We'll be going into theirs. This is why so many people. So, I was talking to somebody the other day, and she was telling me that why is it when I walk through a crowd, it's like these people don't see me; they're almost running me over. I said because you're no longer in their density. They're still there. They can't perceive you. And this is why you're jumping out of the way and people are hitting you and they're surprised when they hit you. Like, where the hell did you come from? <laughs> yeah, or you go into a restaurant and you want to order and it's like, you're invisible. Like, they don't know you're there. Yes. You get someone's attention. Yes. Yeah. So there are things in each density that are not in the lower densities. So we have one through 12. The higher you get, the more stuff will appear in your reality. You can still see if you're in a higher density, You've already carrying the lower densities. You can see down through. They can't see up too because they haven't made that density yet. They don't have that frequency, so they don't perceive it. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what else do you know about Avalon? 
Avalon is a place and it's, you know how they always had through history or mystery or what have you, mythology, whatever. It would come and appear and disappear, appear and disappear. It has not moved. We have. <laughs> so in lowering our frequencies, if you had the higher frequencies way back when, of course you could see it. When you could no longer see it, guess what? You've been lowered. It's out of your range. So it's still there. I also see they have high technology. So what they do is they can open up portals. They can take parts of their reality and literally move it. I'm talking about take parts of Avalon, sections of Avalon, and physically move it like a ship. But it's land. Because... There's no such thing really as gravity. And if you have the ability to have the knowledge of earth and technology and you can create gravity, you can take chunks of that separate from, which would have like a platform underneath and set on top of and move this here, 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 here. You know what that reminds me of that show Lost, the TV series Lost and, you know, the island. And there is uh, in one of the seasons or a few seasons, there was a character named Ben. And there is a scene called Ben turns the wheel. And basically he was able to actually turn this big wheel and it would actually move the island to another location. It would phase it out of one location and phase it someplace else on the planet. So yet yeah, that would be found. Yes, yes. I saw something years ago, decades ago, and I can't remember what it was about. It was some kind of, you know, night kind of thing. And there was this woman and I don't remember the name of this, like it was like a B movie and this island would appear and disappear and then appear and disappear. And they were trying to get to the island. So they had to go through all these obstacles to get to this island that was going to appear because it was timed. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, okay. And a long time ago, I looked into that and I was like, wow, technology. <laughs> Yeah. And it's funny. It's funny too. I've been finding like really interesting soft disclosure about this. I'm just going to sh share another slide on the screen real quick. Um, there is the series of like fantasy books called uh, Pendragon of all, of, of all names called Pendragon. Yeah. They came out in the early two thousands and basically it's about the story about Bobby Pendragon, who is a traveler between realms. And mm -hmm. I have to ask the question, could it be that there's actually soft disclosure in that book? But the way he travels between realms, that he goes through a train tunnel, which leads to a portal, which goes to a door, which is like a stargate. So the mm -hmm. stargate opens and he can go to another realm or go to a different location. And you're in a, you've been in the star city and you've been dealing with stargates yourself. So you're starting to get yeah. a clue as to how these things work also. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's very interesting. Every freaking star city, whether it was a minor star city or a major star city. It's, you know, we mimic everything that was earth and technology also. So when we have these towers and then Elon Musk comes out and says, we're going to make satellites. No, satellite towers. So basically the major star cities sitting on the major ley lines versus the smaller star cities sitting on the smaller ley lines. Towers, satellite towers. This is where they got the idea from, from how this realm was actually put together at one time because it's all technology. So it's very interesting. And the stargates, every single star city had a stargate. You wouldn't, they didn't really have roads like that. They had aqueducts. Aqueducts were most of the bridges. So the bridges weren't for vehicles or people walking across. They were for moving water because the water was the energy. The water was the electricity. The water was the life. So they had aqueducts everywhere. And the aqueducts always came from prime water under the ground. This is what all of a sudden you got mountains and all this water is coming out of a mountain. Coming from where? Prime water under the ground, the ocean. And rivers start with prime water. Most rivers start with a prime water source. And because so much water is coming from up out of the ground, it feeds and makes the river, but because they've been so polluted over time, you got the, the chemicals washing off the fields, you've got the chem trailing, you've got everything you can imagine going into them. That's why our water is so crap. <laughs> so it's 
So basically, I saw that the star force were created out of three things. You had to have the obelisk going up, which is crystalline technology going into the ether, bringing down the ether energy. Then you had the star fort, which was made out of the crystal water, which is seawater because it holds salt and salts are crystals. This is the old um, concrete that we no longer have and what lasts forever. It's made out of salt water. And then the next thing you have, you have the crystal or the tower. You have the building itself. That's designed. Why there's so many water gargoyles or gargoyles is because it all dealt with the water coming in from the aqueducts because water is the energy and why they had fountains. So all three of these things made a living star city. These are your mythical star cities. And they've been stripped, stripped of the water, stripped of the obelisks. And then the buildings themselves have been stripped down with all of the copper in them too. But the Stargate was on every single one of them. And they usually had one to five portals. They would gauge these portals so when you're going in a portal, you can only go one way at a time. You can't use it both ways. So this would be geared to go one way at a certain time to go to whatever destination, depending on how big your start port was. And then on the other end, if somebody wanted to come in, it would be geared, think of a spiral going one direction, really big to small and really big to small. This is how the star portals actually work. They were based on spiral technologies, and every single star fort had these. Now, think of the technology of Avalon. Avalon is also using this technology because when they create two spirals running into each other, it makes a portal in the middle, and they can portal. It can open up the size of the entire island or a portion of it, and this is how they actually move Avalon. That is very interesting. That is very interesting. Um, it reminds me of something I was going to ask you about that you don't have any idea I was going to ask you about this. So this is one of those things where like to see how you remote view, so to speak, and what you get from this. But I have a, um, I have another slide here I'm going to bring up. So... All right, can you see this slide? It's coming, yes. The Voynich Manuscript. Have you ever heard of the Voynich Manuscript? I certainly have. And oh. I just saw this the other day. It just showed up on my feed. And I'm like, what is that? I've seen that before, but I've never paid attention to it. And as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, it's written in rhyme. And it's written like this. I was talking to Arthur about this the other day. And I said, oh my God, I've got to do a video on this thing alone. Smart is the way to be. Being smart is you. This is why it's repeating. It's done in phrases that rhyme and repeating itself to make whole little fragmented sentences. Um, autumn is nice and nice is the way to be. Stuff like this. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's um, interesting. Okay. Blue is, blue is the color of truth. And truth is, and truth could be no bluer. So, okay, so the Voynich manuscript is written in a language that no one's been able to decipher yet. So are you but saying- I can. That, okay, so you're actually, you've been tuning into what some of the words and phrases mean in there. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. It is not a nonsensical language. It's no. not written like we write today. It's done in original writing. This is before Babylon, before the fall of Babylon when everybody has Babel. This is the way we used to speak. We used to speak in parables. We used to speak in rhythm and rhyme. So when you're saying these things, you're rhythmatically, just like what you do when you're, um, what do you call that when the, you're talking? The light, in the light language. This <laughs> is written in a form of light language poetry. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm going to just say some things about the Voynich Manuscript for people that don't know what it is. Um, I personally found out about it a few years ago. I, I had no idea about this, but it's an illustrated codex dated to the early 1400s. 
Now, when I tune into it, I know it's going to sound weird. I'm getting it's, it came from inner earth or what's inner earth, another realm, so to speak. I was getting, yeah, I was getting telos, but yeah, I mean, but basically some, one of the, one of the inner earth realms, maybe a combination of realms. It's, it's a book of magic. It's very potent. I've heard other people talk about it and they talk about, see all the pages have all these different plants on it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I've heard other people that have tuned into it say that there are magic plants for portal technology, plants to make portals, which I thought is interesting. Well, yes, true about, you know, when I'm always talking about the trees and I say, yeah. depending on the tree, the leaf of the tree depends on the frequency that it carries inside of it. So a hardwood, which is a maple tree has five points or more, depending on which maple it is, or um, hardwood. Um, the redwoods have the, the the biggest leaves with the most points. Those points are actual frequencies, not densities, frequencies. So in one frequency, you have 12 densities. These trees traverse frequencies. Now, if you took some of the material from these trees, just like the Bigfoot, bite into a, uh, a, a branch of a hardwood and they're just gone because they match the frequency because they're half plant anyway. Plants naturally carry the frequency, which makes them portals, all of them, and trees being the big one. Why did they chop down all the trees in the realm? Let me guess, because they would match to the number 12 frequency. You know what? It's, you know, it's funny how in sync we are, because I was going to talk to you about giant trees. That was going to be another thing and related to some, to the Jack and the Beanstalk story. But I, I know it for people like how giant trees and Jack and the Beanstalk, but it's, it's going to make yeah. sense. I think everything that we're talking about is going to be coming full circle and the synchronicities are right there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so with this Voynich manuscript, it's currently at Yale University. Now, Yale University from where I am is about 15 minutes away. It's at their li It's in their library. Wow. And I've tried to go actually, I want to look at it myself because this book is, it generates a lot of magic. I would love to get my hands on there and just touch it. <laughs> yeah. I think they have it in like in a glass case, so you can't actually touch it. But it doesn't matter. All... As long as I would be near it enough. Exactly. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's the same thing, but you know what? I don't know if they've changed this recently, but you can't even get in to see it unless you're, you know what? And you have all of the latest, who knows how many um, updates to that. So I'm like, really? It. Like, like the book's going to get a virus, you know, if I'm not, if I, don't, <laughs> if I don't, haven't taken their thing. So yeah, so it's almost like they're protecting it. Like they don't want just anybody to see this book. It has to be a certain, you've got to be at a certain frequency to see it where you're not going to pick up on all the magic. I will and, tell you too, yeah. when I look into this book, there are plants. I've never seen the book when I'm looking now. There are plants that are not here in our realm anymore because of the resets. So some of these plants that you would need to complete some of these potions and mixtures, um, they're not here. We don't have them. They're missing. Um, I also see that it's very medicinal. A lot of this stuff would cure almost absolutely everything. But the main thing is, if you're not an NPC, and let me write that first, um, and you're an energy being housed in an NPC body, because all bodies are NPC, it's what's inside, you can take this information, you can put some of these things together, and it can open up and shut down your chakras and open up your DNA. And when your chakras get shut down, your DNA explodes, your brain starts working at full capacity instead of 7%. And this is the key to doing it. It's also a lot of, um, it has been somewhat scrutinized and some of the formulas off of here, just from what the plants look like from the Alexandria library that burned down the scrolls that were stolen, the plants are in here. They have been identified. They have taken some of the information off of this and created your poison cocktails. Interesting. And by the way, so everyone knows as you're talking, there's a Yale has a site where they actually have each of the pages of the Voynich manuscript. I'm just yeah. cycling through them. So giving everyone like a little, little DNA upgrade, you know, as we're talking. Mm -hmm. 
And Absolutely. That is a very important manuscript that is not made up language. That is a real language. Absolutely. It's just that they talked in rhyme and song. They literally, you know how we talk with each individual word? They would talk like this and it would continue and it would never break and it would always talk like this. And this is how you get to the frequency of what you're saying. Interesting. That's the difference. Interesting. So when you read this stuff, you don't break. You read it as a single sound. Yeah, this, I don't know how, how many pages there are, but all of these plants is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. like, page after now, page the the plants are identified because of the scrolls that have been stolen um and everything was marked at one time and identified the only ones that cannot identify it are <clears throat> of course us because we don't have those scrolls okay now some of the plants no longer exist in this realm they're gone Maybe they still exist in Avalon. They absolutely exist in Avalon and they, exa they exist in Agarthia. All of them. They were not annihilated. Yeah, a lot of these. They, can, they could be regrown, um, but they would never survive because of all of the, the, the toxic soil that we have. We would have to literally bring back the biome to a level without the heavy metals and the nanotech in there. I mean, my God, there's so much graphene in our soil now. It's unbelievable. Yeah, by the way, I'm I'm scrolling through this. There's like, oh my God, is there, there's like more than a hundred pages here. Oh, I'm going to have to go research that. That one's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what I'll do is I'm going to, I'll send the link. I'm, I'll, I'll include the link in in the description area of the video so people can click on this and like look at all these images themselves just wow. to get more immersed in what this i'm actually seeing formulas put together and the formulas aren't for curing um the ailments that were given us they're actually for opening and activating dna wow. and keeping you on a healthy realm and by the way when i'm looking into this book here i'm seeing that when this book was written, um, people did not eat anything but fruits and some vegetables. That makes sense. They had more of a raw diet, eating living things mm -hmm. instead of dead mm -hmm. things. Uh, yeah. One of the reasons that fruits was so high on the agenda because fruits are not considered, I mean, yes, it is live, but it's not living. So if I were to eat a potato, that's living, or a sweet potato, that's living. Any kind of root vegetable is living. So if I were to eat the top of a carrot on the top, yes, you could eat that. But the carrot itself, no, we didn't eat any root vegetables ever. We didn't do it. Um, things that were acceptable to eat, green beans, apples, any fruit, and certain vegetables, lettuce. You could eat lettuce. You could eat all of the, you could eat spinach and stuff like this, but you couldn't eat or destroy the root of this stuff because the living part is in the roots. And you, you absolutely didn't eat root vegetables. And of course we do. We do eat root vegetables. Yeah. I've heard that when we eat uh, something that's grown in the ground like that, it could help us ground. It's like grounding because it comes from the ground mm -hmm. versus something that's grown in the sun could, you know, give us more yeah. of, a, of a light frequency by the way this is just the cross section of the manuscript yeah there's there's uh 116 plus pages here so there's yeah there's a lot with this That's manuscript awesome. i would absolutely love i mean i this thing came across my screen the other day i'm like what's that <laughs> and i'm looking at that point this looks familiar and somebody had asked me about this book a long time ago i i think it might have been campbell purvis from autodidactic Okay. And I'm pretty sure he, he was researching the book, but I was so busy, it didn't grab my attention. And then the other day, it came across my screen. It's like, whoa, what? It's like, it was time. It was time. It's like these things want to get your attention, too. Got my attention. I mm -hmm. just, you know, 
after a few years, all of a sudden came back to me. So to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, so the book is very powerful. And when I was tuning into it, it actually emits magic. And I was getting that Yale University was using it as a battery. In other mm -hmm. words, to, oh, the magic of Yale, why we can charge six figures for someone to send their their kid to go to our university. And mm -hmm. yeah, just everything about that. So that, because that's the way- Just know that a lot of the pharmaceuticals were based off that book, but they did exactly what they weren't supposed to, to make it toxic. So in a way, it is very magical, but they twisted it. Yeah. So the, the concept is different ways to travel between realms, even to travel between star systems, you know, Stargate. Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. possible you can travel to another star system someplace via Stargate? Yes, absolutely. I know when I was doing the Star City stuff and I'm looking at in the beginning, um, this is, we, we are so advanced. We're so dumbed down in here. We are the cavemen. I always say this, but we come from a point where we didn't come from caveman. We became caveman. We became caveman. Everything's inverted. Oh, you were caveman and you came from a monkey and da, 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 da. No, we didn't come from monkeys. That's why there's still monkeys here. Why didn't they evolve? <laughs> no, but here's the truth. Why do we have a Reese's factor? Negative and positive. That comes from a Reese's monkey. That right. was put into us as a takedown. Why do we have a reptilian part of our brain? That again was put into us. They took a human form from a high caliber and they kept bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. So when they say you come from monkeys, no, monkeys were put into us for the Reese's factor. For the Reese's factor. Another yeah. control mechanism. Yeah, so when you say that too, um... I mean, that leads to all other topics. I don't know if we want to get into, but like, who did it? Was it the Anunnaki? You know, was it, you know, someone? Oh, some I know who did it. I know who did it. Right. When this, when this whole scheme was started, we had the, I know I've talked to you about the crystalline city beings who were in a higher density, also in a higher frequency. And they wanted to have a 3D reality. And they came in here. They were not solid like us. You could call them the Anunnaki, the Anuna, whatever. This was their form before they fell. How did they fall? They had to become, they wanted to have the experience of 3D. And so they fell out of their more perfected form. Not all of them, some of them. And when they fell and they became more human, they became corrupted because then it became boring. <laughs> <laughs> so they started messing with DNA. They, they're the ones that created the first cryptid, the chimeras. They were the reason the war started in the beginning. Why this place was even created, this snow globe. Okay, so just, just so I have an understanding, you're calling them crystal beings? So Crystalline city beings, that's what I call them. So they're the ones that's that- That's what they initially were. Okay. Okay, so they're the ones that, that fell, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I, and sometimes too, when I think of the word fall, I think about how if you're in a higher density and you have to come mm -hmm. into this density and have this whole 3D experience. It's a fall. It's a fall. Yeah. It's a fall. Yeah. You're literally <laughs> falling. Yeah. Um, we had talked about it once before. I don't know if you remember. The crystalline city beings had crystal cities. And when this schematic started from the snow globe, where the snow globe was created over the existing Atlantis, Atlantis was huge on the cosmic egg. And when the wars came to an end outside of here, this place was created and put here over the existing Atlantis. The crystal cities that were in here before the star forts, the star cities, before the pyramids, before all of that, they were crystal. The Andara crystals were one of the casualties of the crystal cities when they were blown up with the Phoenix protocol, the electricity from underground and the electricity from the top, making that third electricity in here creating the resets, creating the mud floods, creating the liquefaction, creating all of that reset. These were the first things that were blown up. And this material along with others came from the original technology of the crystal 
the crystal, it doesn't matter if you melt it down. The Andara crystals are the old crystalline cities, what's left. So even though they got blown up, they're destroyed, they're melted, they're in pieces, you can melt them, solidify them, melt them, solidify them. The technology goes nowhere because crystal technology is the highest technology and doesn't matter about the form it's in. It still retains its knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So that's the whole, the whole, the crystal being crystal cities. These are things that are not spoken about, you know, yeah. at least. Yeah. yeah. No, because no one knows about them. Who's going to talk about them? They were the beginning. They were the fall. They were the judgment. When this place was created and we had our first reset because of the chimering, chimering species that had no business together. But when they started chimering technology into biology, that was such a high crime. This is what caused the first reset. This is what caused this place to become what it is. This snow globe, this Dyson sphere, this is the prison. We know how to open the prison, but no one's going to open the prison because unless somebody comes up with that DNA, when we had that talk about it with the um, Giza pyramid, where somebody could go to Mecca and get right. that Ramada that's inside of that box because it's phased, it's in a density. Remember the 12 densities in a frequency? It's in a high high density when somebody finally gets to that high density then they'll be able to go into the vermana because they would match that frequency and for them that vermana would just be there and that's why nobody would stop them from going because all those other people couldn't even be in that density and all you would do is walk all that brick around it wouldn't exist either because that's in the lower density okay i'm just going to say like in the last five minutes you've put out a lot of information <laughs> So, yeah. So my head's spinning a little bit from everything that you're saying. These are things you said before, but when you try, you know, in, in our linear brains, my linear brain anyway, where I'm trying to put everything together into nice, neat packages, sometimes it's difficult to do that because our, there's just so many things that I don't even know if our brain could process it. Plus all of this history has been hidden from us. Yes. So. And this is why when we go back to the, the tale of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, I wanted to mention all of it was based on that original reality. Um, the parables were then created. The Round Table represents what's in here, what big thing has been going on, the flat earth, I don't know, round table, flat earth, in the Dyson Sphere, a section of it. The Round Table is here. It's this Dyson sphere. It's the cross section, the middle. The knights are us. All of us that have awoken, we're the knights. The ones that can see that. We're sitting at the round table. We're a part of the round table. The grail, the holy grail, it's the DNA activation, the bloodline activation. It isn't a single person. Christ consciousness runs in every single one of us. It right. is not individualized. It's all of us. Okay, and then we go to the key. What is the key? Well, the key is you and me. It's us. The sword. The sword. What does the sword represent? The sword represents truth, justice, cutting through the dark. It's the knowledge. It's the key. The key to what? Unlocking the DNA. That's the sword. The sword is mightier than the pen. Or is the pen mightier than the sword? Which one is it? Knowledge is mightier and always will be. And the sword represented all of that. It's the key. The key into the Brahmana. The sword into the Brahmana. So you go. Yep, keep going. Go ahead. I was gonna say the sword, Excalibur. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not sure if you're you were speaking about Excalibur specifically, but that's part of the legend. Is Arthur's special yeah. Okay, you were. Okay. Excalibur being, who gave Excalibur to, to King Arthur? The Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake being a sorceress. Who is the Lady of the Lake? Well, she was trained by Merlin. Who is Merlin? Merlin's actually running everything. Merlin is the Matrix. Merlin is the Matrix. He's running everything. He's training everything. He is the playing field. He is giving information regardless of what we do with it 
like he gave Uther the ability to transfer himself into the husband of Arthur's wife or, or Arthur's mother, not wife. So he's there and he's always doing things. He trained Morgan Le Fay. He trained the Lady of the Lake. We've got Morgan Le Fay, who's as evil as you can get. We've got the Lady of the Lake, who's as good as you can get. Because I don't have to do it. Because we have to pick a side, good or evil, yin or yang. Merlin, Merlin is the machine. Merlin is the matrix, the simulated matrix. Because it's sentient. So the lady in the lake, you know what I was tuning into? Mm -hmm. She had mermaid technology. Of course. I was, <laughs> she was like a mermaid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Lady in the lake is the one that uh, gave Arthur the sword. And I mm -hmm. believe the sword, the way the legend goes, was actually forged in Avalon. And mm -hmm. then came into this realm to the lady of the lake. In the yep. Lake. The only one that could receive it was the Lady of the Lake because she was of a high caliber to match the high caliber of the sword. It had to be entrusted to someone who would choose who was going to get it because Arthur really was of high caliber. He had high standards. And then we, if we go into the story, then you look at all of his knights. Every one of his knights represented an aspect of humanity. This is why the round table was round also. There would never be another in front of another. There would never be anything but equal footing. This is why all of the knights were on the round table because there's no hierarchy. There never was. There was never supposed to be. Exactly. The whole purpose. No, no one is better than the other. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So... Before I meant you, you started talking about trees and yes. the concept of giant trees. Yes. And I mentioned that we we're going to talk about that and something related to Jack and the Beanstalk. But I wanted to know if you have ever heard of this place in Northern Ireland called Giant's Causeway. I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. Okay. I'm going to bring up a slide about, about Giant's Causeway. But it's in Northern Ireland. It's made up of all of these hexagonal stones. Okay. Mm. And I recently saw a video, and I'll leave a link to it below, where they were talking about giant trees. Okay. And they were mm -hmm. talking about cross sections of plants. And on the screen here, you see a cross section of um, the flax plant. And in the middle, you can see all of these hexagon shapes. So what I'm actually going to do is I could, I'm, I'm going to blow that picture up a little bit. Hold on a second. So you guys can see it a little bit better. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay. Let me go, gra let me go grab my glasses really quick. Sure. Um, right over here. Hold on. So while Sonia is getting her glasses, notice that <laughs> the center of it is made up of all these hexagon type shapes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare that wow. to Giant's Causeway. So this whole this whole section in the, wow. in the center of the stalk, so to speak, has these shapes. Mm -hmm. Now, modern science and geologists will tell us that places like Giant's Causeway were, um, you know, some kind of volcanic eruption where something mm -hmm. happened to cause it to be in these perfectly hexagonal shapes and so forth. So mm -hmm. it just things like that. It just it just doesn't make any sense, right? When so, I was, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. Oh, ahead. I was going to say I always go walking in Delaware in the trails, and I had discovered about a year ago that the whole bottom has got these long rocks at, on it, and I'm like, you know what? I went over and I slapped my hand on it. I'm like, what are you? Trees. All of them are trees, and I'm like, Arthur, Arthur. The whole thing is trees. We're walking on trees. The river, the riverbeds, everything is trees. <laughs> yeah. So here, here's some more. Exa exactly. There, and it's all, once you start to like see the realm and what happened to it, mm -hmm. you start to see giant trees where they were everywhere, the remains of them. You start to see remnants of uh, mining that they did 
where they mine yep. things out of the earth, like the Grand Canyon, like all these yep. things. It's like, oh my God, how come I never put, you know, one and one together before? So yep. it's like all really fascinating. These are just some other pictures of, of giant, of the giant's causeway. Now, what's interesting about it. So the concept that was a giant tree and based upon the size of it, it could have gone a mile kilometers into oh, yeah. the, into the sky. It wasn't, a, it yeah. was a big tree. It was a really giant tree. It could have reached into the clouds, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that led me to, somebody actually said something about this. Like for them, it always reminded them of the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. If you think of Giant's Causeway, what's a causeway? A causeway is a way to go from point A to point B, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is it possible that this giant tree was almost like a Jack and the Beanstalk type concept? Well, here's another view of it as well. You, you can see. Mm -hmm. And this, Great. there's, yeah, you can, you can also see, um, is it Devil's Tower? Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Here's some giants. Mm -hmm. There's the whole Jack, the whole Jack and the Beanstalk concept where the tree grows up through the clouds and then there's another realm above the clouds that Jack, you know, experienced. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to one of my slides here because we see the same type of thing happening in Wyoming. There's a structure called Devil's Tower. Mm -hmm. And the same, it has the same type of hexagonal thing that we see in Giant's Causeway. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so I wanted to get your opinion because we're talking about going between realms. Mm -hmm. we're, so we're talking about those type of concepts. And I just wanted to know, like, if you, when you look at Devil's Tower, and even the top of Devil's Tower is flat, like it was mm -hmm. cut down. Like it's not like jagged at all. It's like they took a giant saw and just sawed the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to talk to you about the whole concept of the giant okay. trees. I think this all has yeah. rev relevance. Okay, so all, all of your major waterfalls, mountains that are waterfalls are trees. And then you're going to ask me, where's the water coming from? We, there's root systems that there's a huge fresh water, prime water, ocean below us. It's bigger than our land. It's bigger than our oceans. It's bigger than everything because it's on the cosmic egg and it's huge and we're just tiny over it. All those huge ginormous trees had roots. What happens when you want to siphon gas out of another tank? You're going to get a hose. You're going to stick that in one end. You're going to suck it up and then you're going to have all that gas coming out now, think about all that pressure coming up from the tree roots to the ocean below us. Where's all that water coming from in the mountain that used to be a tree? It's coming up through a root system because it, it has the inertia, just like you sucking a gas hose. I always say the water is prime water. It's coming from underneath of our ground. All of our water came initially from the, the ocean underneath of us all of it. Why did our water become salted in the oceans? When we had the deluge, because inside of this snow globe, there are openings underneath. This is where you get your megalodons and your giant krakens and whatever. They're coming from the bigger earth. They come in and go out, okay? They're just under the ground and they're in the water and you have to go through caving systems. And there's openings in the Dyson sphere. So basically, all that water inside of the Dyson sphere, but under the ground is being siphoned up through different areas. Some of it's just coming up through the ground. And I just did a video on this that I will be releasing probably in a couple of weeks where you can see it. I've also done it before on blue water. Um, all mm. blue water is the prime water coming from the ocean underneath of us. A lot of this stuff has been diverted, shut down and what have you. Why do we have so many dams here now? What is the, the purpose of all these dams? Shutting down the prime water, shutting down the sources. And if I dam up a whole area, well, you can't excavate it. There's quite a few little purposes for dams and creating energy is not true purpose. Sorry, but it's not, it's the narrative. So it's, it's really something when you look at it, yes, giant trees, waterfalls mountains or trees there it is you think these giant trees could have been crystal at some point 
they became crystal. When we had our, there's a place in Arizona, I think it's about around Sedona, and it's called the, um, uh, it's called the the forest of the the crystal tree forest or something. And it's one of the last places where they're they're actually identifying all of the crystal on the ground being crystallized an entire forest. That didn't just happen there. It happened over this whole thing. What happened was um, when I look back and I see that the water in here, none of it was salted at one time. We had big, huge beings in here. And when we had that deluge, they ended up in the water. That Phoenix, uh, it's, it's literally Venus um, mechanism. It's made out of crystal. It's self-repairing. It's self-building. It's, it's sentient. It's, it's crystal technology. It came down and hit the water. When it hit the water, it changed the salinity of the water. It caused petrification because it put some kind of crystal chemical into the water. And that's when all these big, huge beings were trying to get the hell out of the water because they started turning to stone instantly, like a Medusa. That is what caused the salting of the water, the beings being petrified. And then once they were petrified because of the water, they started to degrade. All of your salts are flesh that's been petrified. All of it, the dead sea salts. Himalayan sea salts, that's all living flesh that's been petrified, turned into salts. This is you know, what salts are oceans. In in the last video and the last podcast that we did, you know, you spoke about that. And I remember somebody left a comment like it didn't make any sense or something about the salt. And it reminded me of an episode of Star Trek. The old Trek. series back in the 60s, there was um these beings that got on board the Enterprise. And what they would do is they would fire a weapon at a human and turn them into like a big crystal assault. So it actually wow. take their whole structure and then turn them into some kind of geometric salt crystal. Oh, and then of course, at the, you know, the last five minutes of the, that episode of Star Trek, they figure out how to bring everybody back and make them human again um, by adding whatever, whatever, whatever they would do. But well, I hope it, they didn't shatter them. <laughs> and what, what's that? Hope they did what? I hope they didn't shatter them. Yeah, no, no, no. They didn't shatter them. <laughs> But I thought that was interesting, like that whole concept, like can we actually be reduced down to like that that crystalline so form? Once you take the water out of us, and um, because we're like, what, 70, 80% water, we're bags of water, basically. What is left after you take the water out? Minerals, salts. So what we, we, we comprise of minerals and salts. <laughs> yeah, and actually that's a Mandela effect. Um, the amount of water in our bodies. When I was a kid, I was always taught that we were like 80 or 90% water. Yeah. Yeah. Now what they say is that I believe men are 70% and women are 60%. Wow. So no, I didn't we, know that. Yes. I always I can remember being about 80, 90% water. Yeah. yeah. Self, same, too. same here. And you know, what? out of all of our organs, you know what organ has the most water inside of it? No. Which one? The lungs. Are like oh. something like 86% water. Some huge amount of water is in our lungs. Oh, which is why you can get pleuribus, which is the filling up of the liquids in your lungs. What is that called again? Pleuribus. Pleuribus? Something like that. Something okay. pleuribus. That, and your, your lungs just fill up and you drown. <laughs> Old people get it. Okay. Pleuris. Okay. Pleuris. Something yeah, like so that. So we have that crystalline structure in our lungs and what's happening too with when we're getting all of this extra energy that's coming onto the planet, it's changing the crystalline structure in our, in our bodies, but mostly our lungs because our lungs have all that water and it causes us okay. to, you know, some people may have congestion issues that okay. might be blamed on not the mm. Corona of the sun, but something else, which yep. is a whole topic I won't talk, talk about. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I do know that we're, since we're going through this, we've talked about this body ascension and we're going over a cycle of 12 of seven year increments through the 12. I, I also know that we're going to be, we have changed from some of the body parts that we used to have and oh, yeah. we're going to be further changing and the end result, some of us will go faster than others on this 12 cycles, depending on where you are frequency because it's all about frequency and we're going to become more 
etheric. What is etheric? More water. More etheric. We won't be carbon based anymore. Okay. So we went I from crystal to carbon to etheric. We're leaving the 666 behind. You yes, know, everyone talks about the <laughs> mark of the beast, but yep. uh, carbon is made up of six electrons, six neutrons, and six protons. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're becoming yep. more of a silicate base with our DNA. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So, so yeah. I wanted to ask you too about, let's talk a little bit more about that sword. Let's yes. talk about Excalibur. And I'm just going to read what's on this slide and I'll have you like chime in. But basically the way the legend states it is that Arthur obtained the throne by pulling a sword from an anvil sitting atop a stone that appeared in a churchyard on Christmas Eve. And that's, how the, that's what the legend says. Mm -hmm. uh, foretold by Merlin, the act could not be performed except by the true king, meaning the divinely appointed king or true heir of Uther Pendragon. And again, in this book called Voyagers, which was written by this uh, woman named Asha Nadine, she likens Excalibur to be a battle sword that held what she calls the Staff Stargate, the Staff Stargate tool from the Ark of the Covenant gold box to correct Earth's tilt and vertical spin. So there's a lot of like, when, when we start talking about Excalibur, you're going to have like the mix of information you have about it. Other people have channeled it and they have their information, what they know about Excalibur. So I wanted to know, like, what is when you tune into Excalibur, do you get anything about what this sword actually did? Was it used in battle? Was did it have no. other meanings as well? It never was used in it was never, ever used in a physical battle. Okay. And it was actually quite a sword like you think it was a key. Okay. Okay, so do you remember when I was talking about that Vermana and a key? Key that can open a stargate, but yes, yeah, keep going. Yes, the Vermana. It, it's it... basically the same kind of dealio, and the sword wasn't this big, huge, wielding sword. It was uh, smaller, and it was the material it's designed out of. Uh, um, we don't have um, the combination of this material. It's a well-kept high technical secret, um, this material, we have not developed it yet. At least we haven't. Um, even the dark force, whatever you want to call them, they don't have the, um, one of the reasons alchemy became so important is because they were looking to recreate Excalibur. Okay. So they already were looking to recreate monatomic gold which would help you sustain life almost indefinitely because it would be a sequence inhibitor. So that cylinder wouldn't be going off and you could stay young forever, literally. But all of that was done. All of the, the, the chemicals and everything, they were looking for creating the material the sword was made out of. You're never gonna hear this stuff because this is really top secret. This was one of the most important things to get developed out of here because it's actually one of the keys to get out of the dome. And it had nothing to do with fighting except it had everything to do with who was going to wield the key. You had to be of a high caliber being, which means that your frequency was going to be pretty damn high. And if you have a high frequency, there are things you will not do. You will not succumb to greed you will not rape pillage you will not murder you will not do a lot of things okay so the material the sword was made out of was a mm -hmm. special kind of alchemized yes or yeah it was a cross between crystal and metal this is why they never got the combination right because they did not know how to make the crystal hold a form with metal. There is a formula that I'm not gonna say how to do it because I'm seeing how to do it. There's no way I'm divulging that. There is a formula that you can take A, certain metals, B, crystal, and then C, the missing component, 
which I'm not going to say what it is, but I will give you a hint. We're talking about trees, right? What do trees have? What's the yeah. life of a tree? Maybe. What's the blood of a yeah. tree? Maybe the sap. There you go. Why were all the big trees chopped down, you ask me? Oh, exactly. That's the other thing. Why were they all chopped down? Exactly. Keep going. So, <laughs> one of the components to make this sword was a specific tree sap because it held the highest frequency in the sap. You need that sap to make this sword. Who chopped down the big trees? Wasn't the ones in here. What if you needed to make sure you couldn't get out of the prison? Yeah, and I believe that that life force in those giant trees was a type of ambrosia that other beings could use to extend their life. Absolutely. To heal themselves, all these other because things. It, yeah. It all had to do with the frequency that it carried. If you could combine through your technologies that sap, what couldn't you do? This is why alchemy became so important. What were they looking for? The elixir of life? What were they looking for? How to recreate the sword, the one and only key? You know, isn't it interesting about how some of these powerful figures, you know, in history, they all had like a sword. So, you know, whether it was Arthur, there's the stories of Archangel Michael, and he's got his flaming blue sword. And it's funny how the, the sword... All of these swords are the same. They're a representation of... <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It is super. It is super interesting. Now I wonder where Excalibur is now, because people it's are always looking for it. It's yeah. in Avalon. I was going to say, and I don't think it's in this realm. It's not in this realm. It's not even in this density. And Excalibur was permitted to come here. It's not the only one. It's one of many. And each one of these swords has a name, because it was created by a an artisan. And it almost have a it almost has a life of its own. One of the reasons why Arthur could hold the sword is because it was a DNA match. If your DNA doesn't match, you can't work the key. Exactly. Exactly. The DNA is the key. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's how we pulled it out. Boom. So when you go back and you wanted to open up the snow globe and you wanted to move this. Vermont, the Vermont over to where it needs to go, you're going to have to have the right DNA to insert the key to make it work. Because if you don't have the right DNA, I don't care how many people insert that key. The same thing as the sword in the stone. Yeah, isn't it funny too when they go around um, the, uh, the the Cuban Mecca, like they all reach out and try to touch it to see if they could open it. And of course, no one's been able to do that in the hundreds of years. or however long person today right now that i know of has the dna to do it exactly exactly no, they don't. there will come someone she will be a woman i can never see who this is but i see that it's a woman it's like she's like i can't see her hair color i can't see her skin color but i see her form she's got boobs okay. <laughs> and she's a real woman she's not one of these trans she's a real woman this is a <laughs> real woman <laughs> and one of the reasons that it's going to be a woman is because when they chimered humanity, they chimered it in half, male, female, basically. And with that chimering with the female, the female is still connected to the underworld. The underworld is your sixth sense, connected to three other senses. This is why it will be a woman. Not a single man has this ability. All these beings are running around, these males. You've got the gurus that are men, and you've got the lamas, the Dalai Lamas, and you've got the sad guru, and you got all these. They're all men, yet they're the most disconnected they ever could be. It's the women, the women that are actually connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like in the story of Arthur, like Arthur and Guinevere, Mm -hmm. now, now there's now there's a lot of like different ways that people look at their relationship right mm -hmm. so i know you've tuned into something 
Um, I want to mention too, just something that I've tuned into. We'll talk about what you've tuned into. But a lot of people talk about um, the infidelity, yeah, between Guinevere and 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 her husband Arthur, and her having an affair with Lancelot. And then some people have likened that to what they've done to the Mary Magdalene story. So yeah. in the Bible, they call her a prostitute, so forth. But was she that? Was she more pure than that? You know, was she, you know, yeah. Jesus um, I did, when you were telling me about that earlier, um, I saw that there was someone and I thought it was Guinevere because it was definitely in that bloodline that um, had an affair. But then when you said that and I re looked at it and stepped back, I'm like, oh, my gosh, because Guinevere came from Avalon. She was Avalonian. She was from Avalon. She would have high caliber. The reason they deemed her the most beautiful in the land is because she was from Avalon and her DNA was set up higher, which means that there was no imperfections in her body, in her face, in her hair, in her mannerisms. She did not have the personality to do such a thing because of where she came from, because of where her DNA is, because of the density she was in. When she came back down to the lower density, which was a choice on her behalf, um, yeah, they demonized her. I do know that Avalon is waiting for everyone. It's not just this mythical place. It's an entire density. So when you say it's just Avalon, the island, no, think bigger than that. Avalon, the density, because everything on that density inside of the frequency is running Avalon. It's, it's all running the same everything technology mental set dna activation you name it yeah and what i was tuning into as well um related to to avalon and the 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 armies of arthur and so to speak um i was getting that those armies actually came in through a stargate from avalon mm -hmm. that's that's what i was tuning into yeah so yeah so is it possible that Arthur did something that the system was not expecting him to do, that was not allowed, actually bringing in an army from another realm. And it mm -hmm. reminds me of those, I, and I have to say, I haven't seen any of these shows except maybe clips here and there, but there was this whole uh, Stargate series of shows um, on television about how there'd be a Stargate and how they could travel the different planets and so forth through the Stargate. So is it possible to create a Stargate open a Stargate and mar march an army through it to defeat the enemies in this realm. It. You can yeah. march anything through it. Um, when I actually look at this, I'm going to go and look at these armies. I have not once ever looked at the armies. Oh, do that. Thing. Yeah. So let me look real quick and see what I'm actually seeing. Okay. So basically what I'm seeing is, yes, and it was more than one Stargate. They opened up a few Stargates. It isn't the kind of war that they say it was. It was not a war of actual getting out there and fighting with swords. Not that kind of a war. They bring in a lot of people, and a lot of the war was words. You can in capture, you can enslave. And you can bind people with talking what you're saying. So it looked like on the dark side, and that had to do with Morgan Le Fay. It had to do with Mordred, his his son, which more okay, Morgan Le Fay was Arthur's half sister. She had tricked Arthur into mating with her to have Mordred, the son, because she wanted to use that to take over Arthur's Camelot. Arthur's Camelot represents our world we used to have, Antiquatec. Okay? There's a correlation there. Who was who was Mord Mordred? Mordred were cryptids. Morgid, Mordred, Mordred were chimeras. Who was who was uh Morgan Le Fay's sister? Morgana or something like that, Mor Morgaya, Morgana, I don't remember what her name is. There was two sisters, Morgan Le Fay and the other one. Well, 
one of those two women ended up having the child. I still can't see which one of those had really the child, if it was Morgan Le Fay or if it was the other one, because they have the same energy signature. Who were they? Reptilians, shape-shifting reptilians, which is why they could trick everyone. So she presented herself to be Guinevere. Arthur slept with her thinking it was Guinevere. Shapeshifters. The sun, reptilians. Now look at our reality. Who's running our reality? Who's running humans into the ground? Who's trying to murder every single one of us? <laughs> Who are the knights on the round table? We are. It's all correlated. Yeah, that's interesting. By the way, the you must have some stuff going on with your lighting in the background because I said just yeah. Saw Arthur lighting. just came in and turned the light on because I'm sitting okay. in the dark. Again. <laughs> Arthur, how are you doing? Arthur, how are you doing? You can come over and say hi. I'm fine. <laughs> Arthur, I, I I want to ask you a question. I'm not dressed appropriately for a video. He's just okay. got a t-shirt on. Well, he thinks he's not appropriate, but come in here. You've got a t-shirt on. Oh, you're. <laughs> Oh, you're fine. I was I was going to ask you, what's it like spending all this time with Sonia? Wonderful. Is it? Is she as wonderful as it as she appears to be? Yeah, she's the same as uh, on on camera. I totally believe that. Totally believe <laughs> that. Well, we heard about your your upcoming adventures in Albania, so we look forward to hearing about what happens there. It's not uh, booked yet, but uh, yeah. It's in the works we're going to end up there i decided uh a couple of days ago i'm like i'm not going home and arthur's like what you're not going home i said i've decided i'm not going home i'm breaking pattern <laughs> i'm staying <laughs> i am very unpredictable sometimes i just do things on a whim and a spur i do yeah no, that's i'm very spontaneous <laughs> yeah spontaneous or unpredictable i think mm -hmm. that's the whole key to like living our lives here so the system can't figure out what we're going to do is we have yeah. to be unpredictable. We have to make these decisions that we're not expected to make. And that's, when, that's, when we, that's what leads to these new adventures that we have. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. And for that, you have to keep it to yourself and not uh, tell in advance. But I've got a big mouth, so I'll just announce it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't know any details, but once you've done gone mm -hmm. there and done, done the work, wherever, wherever that might be, it's a big country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be very interesting to hear what you've discovered. We're so looking yes. forward to it. I'm really excited about going. Um, I didn't know anything about it. Um, Arthur's like, well, let's look into it. So today, instead of doing anything, we started watching uh, YouTubers that have been to Albania and their take on it. We knew nothing really. I just, you know. So after watching them, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going there. I mean, it's the only place where. Uh, an American citizen can go for 365 days without a visa, just a regular passport. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But that's the great. whole thing with Arthur is, um, Arthur grounds me. I bounce. I bounce all day long. I bounce, I bounce, I bounce. I, I could tell. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> and Arthur grounds me. I'm like a balloon and he pulls me down to earth. That's good. I see you forgot the name. Yes, I did. And he's always, when we do our things, he's like, Sonia, take a drink, take a drink, take a drink. Because I'll go and I won't drink. <laughs> Especially now, like drinking water is like so important. Yes, it is. So yes, important. it is. Especially because we are going through this ascension and we need fluid. I don't care if you're juicing. I don't care if it's water. I don't care. It's got to be liquid. Or, right. or even if you're eating something like a pudding that's more organic or something. You know, yeah. more liquid and lots and lots of fruits. Yeah, and I'm I'm always keeping like a big bottle of water next to me, just because like oh, yeah. I, I literally don't feel good unless I'm drinking throughout the day. Me too. I I mean I everything just seizes inside of me if I don't have liquid. I mean it's terrible. So I've got to drink. And Arthur's like, you drink a lot. I'm like, I know I do. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So yeah, we can um continue talking. There's a couple of things I want to slam in real quick. Yes, do that, um, please. Do that, please. So basically, um, Guinevere, um, that whole thing with Guinevere and the takedown, it was the first initial nink into the um, takedown of Camelot 
But really, it started before that with um, Morgan Le Fay, which represented the reptilians. And it was a big plot to take down Camelot because Camelot was the ideal. I mean, I wrote down a couple of things. Um, I looked up the Arthur, the author, not Arthur, of this, you know, who made this book. And he wrote down, there's a couple of things I wrote down, which were their, um, if I can find it again, uh, their rules. Their their chivalry rules. No, okay, one is... was um. You can read this. Can you read this? Or I have to get my glasses. The code of chivalry. One, no murder. Uh, assault. No assault. No murder. Number what? one. This is Camelot. You're talking about. It's Camelot. Okay. These were the rules. Okay. Two, no treason. Uh, then it says country king. Okay. Uh, no, no treason. Oh, I might have to get my glasses on to read that. It's horrible. So basically, no murder, no assault, no treason, country or king. Number three, no cruelty to women and nothing but mercy for women. Because women were the conduits for the, for the inner world, for the underworld, as you would put it. Okay? The next one, number four, was to help all women, whether they were young whether they were teenagers, whether they were of mid-age, old age, it didn't matter. You helped all women. And I mean on every category, food, money, shelter, whatever. You were there for women. Women were the number one thing in Camelot. They were put up on a pedestal and they were put up because they were the ones that could go to the underworld world. They were the oracles. They were the soothsayers. They were the seers and they were the healers. Okay, next one was never harm women. Again, another one, never harm women. Um, no fights, no arguments, no battles over worldly goods or love. That's a big one. So if you're going to be holding this in Camelot that no fights or battles or anything would ever come, and it was over worldly goods, which is financial gain, any kind of gain, and love do you think for one minute that Guinevere would have cheated on Arthur when that's one of the main commandments of Camelot no no then the next one is fear God and maintain highness the fear of God and maintain highness so basically when I look into when that was said it doesn't mean fear your god it means basically go to the standard of be a god like yourself that you are be the god that you are of a higher caliber now think about this if these were the foundations of camelot do you think they're going to go into a physical war stab 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 not really that also got twisted so when armies came in, it wasn't armies with swords. It was armies of knowledge, talking, changing the mindset. You know, the only way you're going to change around is here. This is just a reflection of here. And there may have even brought in technology that would raise people's frequency as well. Yeah. I've heard of the Tartarians actually had these types of generators uh, some were called iq generators they could actually generate this frequency that would make people smarter <laughs> so it'd be interesting if like cool. if if you were to go to camelot if it would actually be generating these frequencies to just put you into that mindset to just naturally yeah. raise your frequency well, what what i see is they had the ability to shut down the chakras so when you shut down the chakra system which are governors governing what you say parts of your brain. So why do we use 7% of our brain? Some of us don't even use that much because of the chakra system that was put in as a shutdown, a lockdown. Well, you have the technology, you shut down the chakra system. Those governors come off. What's going to happen? You're going to become brilliant. Yeah. Everything, everything starts to change when we, when we change into the chakras combined, we become like a pillar of light. Yep. The whole concept, it. just yep. one thing. Once those chakras are down and you are working as a full unit energy being with north and south poles, I, I call it positive and negative, 
because we all are like a magnet with the positive and negative. That's what runs our entire system. And you have a true Kundalini rising, which if you have a Kundalini rising now and you have a chakra system in, you're creating a death scenario. Those chakras will prevent that Kundalini, which is your spinal fluid going from the bottom, coiled on the bottom to go up. It's supposed to be running like this, but the chakra system stop it. And that's why it's coiled on the bottom. And this is why you don't have a lot of these abilities, which runs the brain. So you do this Kundalini rising and you've got a chakra system and the chakras will prevent it. It'll get stuck in one of those. You will short circuit. So there's a lot of stuff in the new age truther movement that I'm going, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you need to get rid of the chakra system first before you do anything with your Kundalini because then it can run like it should be fully running your energy being as you are an energy being inside of this avatar. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, we, we've covered a lot of ground. We talked about, you know, not just King Arthur, the Pendragons, but we, we went into giant trees and the Vo Voynich manuscript and so forth. Was mm -hmm. there anything else that you wanted to cover, Sonia, before we um, read our podcast? Let me today? look at my notes real quick, because yeah. I did do a bunch of notes on King Arthur because I find it so intriguing. Well, I, I'm going to say this real quick. In the King Arthur thing, you, you first have the 12 knights of the round table. And then over time, it becomes 24 knights of the round table. So this shows you one thing. It's generational. So there are three knights, two from the original 12 and one from the second set, which was children that grew up who actually found the Holy Grail. And actually, it's not that they found the cup but they found what it meant, which was raise and activate their DNA. And they met God there. Where is God? God is inside of you. And when you raise your being, you take down the chakra system, your brain is fully functioning and you're working as a whole unit with your Kundalini. You know where you're going to find God? You're going to find out you are God. And those three, it was, I wrote it down. Let me see the three that, okay. So two from the old, original 12 were were Percival who found the Holy Grail and Bors of Younger. So he was the other, Sir Bors of Younger, Sir Percival. The third one was Lancelot's son. And that was Galahad, Sir Galahad. This is showing it's generational in this story. This isn't just about a single generation. It's multi-generational. Okay, so when you say they found the Holy Grail, are you saying they figured out how to turn on their DNA? Yes. Reactivate these these strands. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> how did they find Christ? They found Christ consciousness. They found their God, that they were God. They're the only ones that came upon the Holy Grail and the Holy Grail being the DNA activation. So with all that said, it makes se sense that the system would want to write them out of history, so to speak, right? Yeah. And turn it yes. into a myth. Absolutely. You can't have that. No, you can't have that. So. And that's really important because all of us who are the knights, we are. Where's the round table? Here, this reality. Interesting. What are we looking for? The Holy Grail. <laughs> And we're all on the brink of finding it and activating it. Yeah, we're on the biggest adventure of all, and we don't even know it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is the best time, I think, in the history of the world to be alive. Literally, it's the best time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you about something people talk about, Arthur. They say, they call him the once and future king, because some people believe that he's going to come back into this realm. Do you have any viewpoints or feelings about that? No, but I sure can look. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me go for it. Let me see. Oh, Arthur is the representation of humanity. It isn't a single being. It's all of us. We are all Arthur. We're all Percival. We're all all of these attributes. Every one of the knights on the round table are us. We have 
all of these attributes. So I'm seeing Arthur as you, me, all of us. I see Guinevere as me, you, all of you out there. We play every part. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And for people that are like looking for like a certain savior to come back, oh, this person's gonna come back and save us. No, it's us. You know who's gonna save you? You are. You're going to save yourself. Your Superman is you. You are Superman and Superwomen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Superman and Wonder Woman. <laughs> yep, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Isn't it funny how Wonder Woman came from a, a mysterious island that disappears? <laughs> that is quite fascinating, right? Yeah. I think called Paradise <laughs> Island, but yeah. Yeah, Paradise Avalon. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And she's in an invisible plane. Now let me guess. Invisible. What is invisible? Invisible. Higher frequency because we can't see up into that frequency, but we can look down into the frequencies we carry. And if we don't carry those densities inside of that frequency, you are as invisible as you get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the things that I've, I, I talk about, and I recently, um, on another a previous podcast, I spoke with a woman named Karen and her whole thing is about removing these distortions that we have in our field. And when we remove the distortions, it just it's naturally helps us rise in our frequency. It's almost like those big hot air balloons. You take off the weights and the hot air balloon goes up into the sky. Yeah, getting rid of those things. Yeah. Distortion, distortion, distortion. I'm seeing that the distortions are unwanted baggage, emotional baggage or distortions. That's, that's part of it. Yep. So... You would have to go through the heart. The only way you're getting rid of that is you're going through the heart. You got to go through your third. You got to go through your second trinity. Your first trinity is not going to get rid of distortions. Your gut trinity is not going to get rid of distortions, but your heart is. There the, there's the answer. You have to go through the heart. It's in this part of your body. You have to go through your heart to get rid of these distortions. Yeah. Because it's the strongest brain you have. It's the most powerful. You can label it absolutely anything, but it's your, it's your second trinity. This is what breaks the distortions. Exactly. And the heart seems to have override. It can overpower anything. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So no uh -huh. matter what's going on, we have solutions actually already within us, within our heart. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So your distortions, which means that these are overlays from every incarnation you have ever had that carry over. Those are also your distortions. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So there's that. <laughs> well, Sonia, I'd like to thank you like for another show. I think we've already been speak speaking for almost a couple hours. So what? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. It just <laughs> it just goes by like that. Okay, I better let you go. <laughs> I'll be talking forever. Yeah, no, that's good. Here. There are other things that I, I, I'm going to look deeper into Avalon. I'm going to look deeper into where it's lying. I do know that I had done a video on the triangles in this reality, the 12 triangles that also makes the Dyson sphere. Um, and they are portals. And one of them, of course, we know the Bermuda Triangle. And then we have 12 of them, six on this part and six down here, one at the north and one at the south. So that means um, five, and with the equator being exactly in the middle of it. So the Capricorn and the Cancer, there's six on each one of those, and they're juxtaposed. They make a perfect Dyson sphere. Those portals, those triangles, there's there's actually one but in the Japan, Japanese Sea, Okinawa, Philippines, Guam. There's one over there on Australia, both sides. There's one in bermuda the bermuda triangle there's one there's one in the great lakes uh the north pole the south pole of course there's one is hyperborea and the other one down is antarctica um and then there's there's one that's in argentina there's one that i mean there's there's 12 altogether. well i was looking into this and i found one of the places that avalon lies is on the bottom of South America, across from Argentina, in the ocean, 
the whole thing is a big distortion. You can't even fly over that area. It is forbidden. They say it's cold in the ozone, but that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing Avalon. Interesting. Now, these, these, these pyramids you're talking about, did you speak about them on one of your Patreons? Okay. I had two Patreons back to back. Okay. That was the first half and the second half. I could not cover all that material in four hours. And it took me four hours to cover all of it. Wow. And I, th I thought I saw the diagrams. Like you drew, you made some drawings yes. of those too. I drew diagrams mm -hmm. and I drew the three continents that are missing. I drew right down through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean going Cuba. I'm uh, not Cuba, but yeah, Cuba, um, the Caribbean are tips of what was part of it. Um, Bimini going all the way over to the Canary Islands was a part of it. Um, up by um, Spain, it went all the way up to Greenland. It was touching Greenland. This whole thing was Atlan. I call it Atlan because that's what they call it. We call it Atlantis, but this whole thing is Atlantis. Every thing is part Atlantis. in here is Atlantis. Yeah. So that's one. The other one is Lemuria, and then there's Mu. Lemuria is over by Mu and Lemuria were merged into one in our knowledge, but they are two separate places. Lemuria is over here where there's the Indian Ocean going over here and you can see the diagram. Mu, which is not Lemuria, comprised of Fiji, Hawaiian Islands, Samoa, um, and a whole bunch of islands. Those are what's left of it. There are triangles in each one of those. When we had the deluge, Boom, it went under the water. Nothing sank. The water rose. There are huge epicenters underneath of the water, pyramidal systems. I mean, we could talk about that. That's just huge, where in each pyramid, there's a hand with a crystal ball inside of it. That was the crystalline technology. It's the same stuff that the crystal skulls are created out of the real crystal skulls. It's the same technology. It's what this dome's made out of. It's what the phoenix is made out of. It's all in communication together. One of the reasons the crystal skulls were put everywhere was so we could keep an eye on mankind and see when the reset would happen again because it's your radios. Yeah, that's, um, I talk about these statues that have been appearing, to me, they're Mandela effects with crystal eyes, like Thanks. statues mm -hmm. with actual eyes made out of crystal, right? That I've Thank never saw before. Way. Yeah, how they can Three remote view. Watchers. Watching. Yeah. Remote viewing, yes. so to speak, yes. from elsewhere. But anyway, that you've got to watch those two videos. They're long. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure like when I watch it, that'll make more sense. I haven't a chance to watch them yet. I just saw the diagrams like, oh, what's this about? Yeah, they're just, they're long, they're long. And and I start, I start diving deep on some of that stuff. And it's like, I need to talk about this stuff. Everything is interwoven. There's so much material to cover. I could do video after video after video, and I will never talk about the same subject. <laughs> That's great. So, well, Sonia, okay, thank Chris, you. We better, yeah. we better go, or I'll keep talking your ears off. No, it's it's no it's no problem. We'll have you on again soon. I'm sure there'll be another okay. synchronistic event where we want to talk about the same thing that'll come up into our realities, which will be great. That was really ironic, wasn't it? <laughs> it it was so ironic. That and the Voynich manuscript and talking about giant trees and yep. portals and going, yeah, stargates and all these different things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, really. Okay, was. Chris, I thank you very much for having me again. And I will be posting this video whenever you give it to me. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Take care.